So a while ago I was at Alex's place and we made tuna moi. Um, I was going to give him the recipe and write it down, but I haven't actually yet. So instead, I'm going to make it because I'm hungry and tuna moi is fantastic. So I hope this works and you can use that. Um, so what you're going to need is um, butter, a couple of teaspoons worth, tuna, mozzarella cheese or really any other cheese you like. You'll need lemonade, sorry, lemon juice. You'll need lemon pepper or just pepper will do if you don't like that. Pasta, um, milk and flour. So what I've done is I've got my water under boil to put the pasta in. I've started heating up my pan and I'm preheating my oven. Um, so what you need is a generous dollop of butter um, and it goes. Um, now you're going to melt that down. Um, and once that's melted down you're going to have put in about a teaspoon and a half to two, sorry, a tablespoon and a half to a couple of tablespoons of flour. Don't burn the butter because that would just be plenty of terrible. So once that's mostly melted, doesn't have to be completely melted, but mostly melted, you grab your flour, you grab a tablespoon thereof, yes, oh sorry that's a half a tablespoon, a tablespoon of flour, heaped, throw it in the corner, grab a bit more, only a little bit, also put that in the corner. Um, now you can use self-raising flour, it probably works better with self-raising flour, um, but I'm not 100% on that one. So, then what we do is we mix it in, and what we want to do is start from the edge of the flour and mix it all through so that it gets all of the lumps out of it. Now, it does not have to be perfect. See how there's still plenty of lumps in there because as you stir it, it'll catch up. Um, now, if you need to, you can add more butter. Um, what I would generally advise is you start with less butter and then add more as you go. Um, but I generally don't. Now, that actually needs a little bit more flour. So give me a sec. Grab my flour. Throw a little bit more in. Now, what we want to do is we want to keep stirring this for the next minute while it bubbles away. Um, just to cook this flour because it's going to be the basis for your white sauce. Um, really, really don't leave this unattended if you can help it at all. Um, for your, once you hit this point, you just need to keep watching it um, until you get the water, the milk in. But unfortunately, I'm going to have to leave it unattended for a moment to tell you what I've done over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn that down and come over here. So what I have done over here is I have drained my tuna, but I've drained it into my cup. And then I've, yes, I've already spilt it. And then I've topped up that cup with milk so that you have a whole cup. Now, once that's nice and, and bubbling, what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit in. We're going to not forget our spoon over here. And then we're going to stir it in. This time you really, really, really need to make sure that there are no lumps. It's really, really vitally important that there are no lumps in this. And so what you need to do is you need to add it little bit by little bit, but see how it's cooking really quick? So you need to get to it pretty quickly. See how it's thickening? That's good. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to go back over to here. We're going to get another cup of milk. Try not to spill this one all over the floor. And then we're going to do the same thing. So we'll go over here, put a little bit of milk in, forget my spoon again, over here, stir it in. It's 
really important that you do this quickly and you do this well. Um, if you rush it and just pour all the milk straight in, you'll just get lumps and, and lumpy white sauce is not tasty white sauce. Once you get to a certain point though, you'll be able to find that you can just keep throwing it in and it won't make lumps. But till you get to that point, you really need to keep stirring. last of it. Wonderful. Alright, so you'll find that that's quite, it's a little bit thick but it's not incredibly thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that for just a moment but not very long at all. Make sure it's on quite low. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the pasta in to my pot which is currently boiling quite successfully. Um, now there are many different ways of working out how much pasta you need. I actually can't remember any of them right now. Um, so what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to throw in a pile of pasta. Um, I think it's something like a cup to a person, but in this case I'm not a person. So I'm going to throw in way too much pasta. <laughs> Oops. Um, for that pot, but hey, ah, should be right. If yeah, it's too much I can always take it out. What you really want is a couple of, of um, couple of cups of uh, uncooked pasta. The lid back on that. Now, our white sauce um, is on quite low at the moment. Stir it. Now I'm going to turn this up a very, very tiny bit. I'm going to spill white sauce everywhere well on it. At this point, you need to just keep stirring it and stirring it and stirring it and stirring it until it thickens. Um, there is no quick way to do this. If you do it any quick way, it'll generally just burn and be crap. So um, the other thing is you've got to keep stirring it slowly. You've got to keep moving it, otherwise it'll burn to the bottom and the top won't cook. Now it's really, really important that you don't let it bubble. See how it's starting, just starting to get it? That's okay, but make sure you stir that out really, really quickly um, because you don't want that to happen because it'll burn it. So I'm just going to actually turn it down a little bit because it's... Um, but it's thickening. Okay, so I've been stirring it and stirring it and stirring it and it's starting to thicken up. Um, I'm actually kind of starting to think this might be as thick as it's going to get at the moment. I have made them thicker before, but perhaps I didn't put in enough flour. So, once you've gotten to this one, turn it down so it doesn't bubble, because bubbling is bad. You need to add about a teaspoon's worth of lemon juice. Lemon juice. That you probably should have opened before you started cooking, Jess. Or a couple of splashes will do it. Um, pretty well it's to taste. So, stir that in. And to this one, that we want to put in our tuna. Now, um, what you can do beforehand is get your tuna out and you can break it all up and make it all pretty. Um, you can get some really smooth mornays like that. One of the other ways you can do is you can get a fork and just mess it up a little. Um, doing this with one hand is interesting. So, because I've only got one hand, and I can't really do anything at the moment. I'm just going to go for the chunky tuna. 
And that's taking this and putting it in. And then breaking it once it's in there. Um, what you really want to do is take it all out of the can before you do this. Mince it up with your fingers until it's really, really fine. Mmm, doesn't that look appetizing? Om nom 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 nom. So you need to mix that all in and mash it up while you're there. Try not to have any really big chunks. It's at this point that you want to throw in some of your lemon pepper, which I also should have opened beforehand before I started cooking. But I've usually got two hands to do this, so it's not usually that much of an issue. That's right. Take that jar. No, I'm sorry, this is a two handed job. There we go. So your lemon pepper, throw some in. Now I like a lot of lemon pepper, but each to their own. Um, stir it all in. Right, once that's stirred in, you need to put in a cup of shredded cheese. Here's some I prepared earlier. As you can probably tell, I am not the most precise of cooks when it comes to amounts to put in. So I put a little stir in. Mmm, cheese. I'm guessing that's about a cup. So, once we got there, we need to stir it in. Because it's going to melt all through it. Mmm, melty cheese. Um, generally, what I did when I was younger as a kid is I put half a cup of tasty cheese, half a cup of um, mozzarella cheese. Just gives a little bit more taste. Um, but I'm, I really like mozzarella cheese. So it's a bit easier. If you want it a little bit tangy, use tasty. Um, if you like it a bit smoother, use mozzarella. Um, I find the mozzarella, though, will give you these really stringy melted cheese bits that you just can't get with um, tasty. So while we're making sure the pasta's going okay. P.S. Check out my wooden spoon. We now have two of them because we went to a trivia night for Gobbo's work and um, we our table won the wooden spoons. The aim of the night was to buy all the answers we didn't do that, we just went, eh, that's close enough. So yeah, wooden spoon. Really nice. Really useful. So what I'm going to do is pull out one of the bits of pasta. Just make sure it's cooked. Don't leave this alone too much, because if you leave this alone too much, it'll burn to the bottom of your thing. Um, and it's at this point... Then you want to grab your fork or a clean instrument and taste it because depending on what it tastes, whether you want to add more pepper, add more lemon, um, you can also add actual black pepper to this. Um, see how stringy it is? How good is that? It's fantastic. That's actually pretty good. Um, I'm going to add a touch more lemon juice to mine. But you don't want to over lemon it and you don't want to over pepper it. I have done both at varying stages in my life. So, back to the fork. Also, tasting is my favourite part of any cooking. Mmm, that's good. So, my pasta is pretty good too. So, I'm actually going to need two hands for this, but I'm going to drain my pasta out 
and then I'll be back in a moment. Hello again. So I have drained my pasta. I have turned off my tuna while I was doing that just in case it um, burnt. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix the two together. There are two different ways of doing it. One is by putting the pasta in your trays first. Um, I'm not going to do that just because I find that it means that it's not mixed in as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to pour our pasta bit by bit in with our tuna and we're going to mix it in. Okay, so we have stirred in all of that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my thing off the hot pot. I'm going to take my tuna over here, put it on a hot pot. Now, I'm going to attempt to balance this so that I can put this in. Really, really sorry about that. So, there you go, you have a view of what I'm fairly sure you have a view of my pot. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to pour this into an oven proof container, making sure I spread it all out while I do it. So, once that's all stretched out, I'm going to get my mozzarella cheese. I am going to very liberally cover this in cheese. Um, you want to get it really over everything. Um, I tend to use about a cup on this. Um, sometimes a bit less, but enough to coat it. So, from here, what I'm going to do is open my oven. And I'm going to put this in the oven for... Um, until the um, cheese is melted on top. Um, I've currently got it just below 200 degrees at about 180. You can probably go a little bit more than that if you want it to. Um, and if you like your cheese browned, you can use that instead. So I'll see you when it's done. Bye. Hello again. It's been some time and we're gonna check our tuna. And ah, uh, it looks good. Um, no, 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 no. Maybe a little bit too much done on this side, but that's okay. Um, if you like your cheese like that, then that's good for you. So, as you can see, it's all nummy. So we can bring it out. Now, at this point, I would generally let it cool for a little bit before I bring it out, but that's all right. Put it on our hot plate. And there we have it. Let it cool for a little bit and cut it up. And serve it to people. Chinamone. Huzzah.